and it's really cold out here. It's bitter. It's extra bitter. Extra special bitter, mate. Sound like you're from London. <laughs> All right, welcome back to 21090 Seller Series. Happy New Year, everyone. Our first Seller Series of 2019. I am Andy. This is Todd. And I am Mike. Hey. Mike is with us as always, owner of Hellas and gracious enough to let us come in here and sample some amazing beers and some amazing food. Ooh. Today, we're gonna to be talking about an English style beer, the ESB, Extra Special Bitter. Now, believe it or not, they're not bitter beers. But this is something that the Englishmen were accustomed to drinking back in the day. They go into their standard kind of caramel, toffee, malt forward uh, bar drinking beer. Am I correct about that? Yes, sir. And uh, we've got two very special varieties today, yeah. takes on the ESBs from a yeah. local favorite, Heavy Seas. So, Mike, I'll let you kind of take it away and tell us a little bit about uh, what we're doing today. Yeah, one of the biggest misnomers of ESB and that we don't understand here in American culture is that it's really not a bitter beer. It's really yeah. just a pale ale, right? It's a, an adaption of a traditional classic pale ale with a little bit more bitterness. Yep. When we talk about bitterness, um, we measure bitterness through units called yeah. IBUs, right? Which measures an acid that's found in hops that give hops that bitter bite. Um, a traditional or classic ESB is anywhere from 30 to 50 IBU, which is fairly mild. Mm -hmm. um, where we're used to IPAs in this country that have over 100 IBU. Right? your beers so, in the yeah. <laughs> So typically, when we're profiling a beer, we'll take the same beer and just drink two different vintages right. of it, right? So we can see the nuances of the aging yep. process. Part of this, um, the difficulty with what we're doing is that we're using an anniversary beer that was only brewed once. So this 21st anniversary ESB that we'll be profiling today, um, we don't have an opportunity of doing the exact same beer. Right. So what we've chosen to do is use the current version or the fresh version of the same same beer, similar beer, Winter which Storm. is the Winter Storm. Yeah. Okay. So there's going to be differences in the process in making the beer. The Winter Storm is closer to a classic ESB, mm -hmm. whereas the 21st anniversary has some barrel aging okay. and has some unique, you know, quality qualities that a typical ESB will not have. And some pretty cool local times yes, that we'll yes, find out about. Yes. Yeah. Who brews these? Tell us about them. What makes this special because of that local vibe? We have a very special place yeah, in our sure. for this brewery, but, but tell uh, us a little bit about who we're sampling seas. today. Heavy Seas is the you know flagship brewery of this area, yeah. right? They kind of started it. Hugh yeah. Sisson was you know the local man behind the scenes that you know kind of helped get yep. brewing deregulated yeah. and home brewing happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, Heavy Seas has had a long, strong local presence for a long time in this. Totally. They've also had a tie. They they enjoy their English style beers uh, yes. using. Yes. Uh, yes. He does. They they experiment with a lot of European hops, a lot of German hops yep. they use in their yes. beers. Yep. So they they really excel in those malt four driven yes. beers yep. so i am really excited i know the winter storm is one of your favorites you've cloned so, this one i've cloned it i did the brewmaster chris leonard sent me their brew sheet that we cloned we did a whole mm -hmm. series on that yeah so that's great i love this beer so this is but these are both on tap which is fantastic right so you're gonna want to come into hellas as soon as possible so you can sample both of these the uh heavy seas 21st anniversary you will not find From it anywhere 2016. else 2016 so mike which one should we start with which one do you think I think we should start with a winter storm okay. Okay. because it is like the lighter of the two beers. All right, let's talk about that. Let's pull it up. You can see the color is not much different from the no, two beers, but no. this is their uh, seasonal release. Every uh, winter it comes out. It's one of my favorites. Um, really, mm. for this one, it's sweet nose, I think. Yeah, and definitely. you're supposed to get a touch of hop aroma, but no hop presence, yeah. really. You're not, you don't want to get that bitterness. Yeah, no, which maybe is a little, little, on, the little, little on the finish. A yeah. little on the finish, but up front, it's definitely yeah. malty. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's get Let's in. Say a little cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers. Happy New Year. You don't you taste do. a ton of sweetness in this as no, well. No. Now, Winter Store comes in at 7.5% uh, alcohol, which again is on the high range for an ESB. Yeah. So that's, you know, this we've reviewed this a bunch of times. This is a this great is beer. The first time I've, I may have had it on draft in a while. It's been mm -hmm. a while since I've had it on draft, usually yeah. bottled. But, you know, you said it's not a lot of sweetness. You're right. The finish is a bitter finish for the 50, 50 IBUs, but I still get a little bit up front, real quick. And maybe it's from the, the malts they used, mm -hmm. that toffee sort of 
real. It's not sweet, but it's it's like, certainly not bitter. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, the hops aren't on the, bitter. the hops aren't the predominant player yeah. in this, which is. Which is really nice. It kind of reminds me of like the salsa will go on a traditional uh, flan. It has a little bit of bitterness uh, to it, a little bit of this. sweetness, caramelly. Yes, yes. But it's um, it's not a sweet caramel like we like you, Mike. A little bit of sweetness. Oh, just a little bit of sweetness. Yeah, just that, enough huh? to get by, right? <laughs> All right. So, Mike, we just tried the winter storm again. Very appropriate as we just had our first winter storm of the season here in uh, Baltimore. Um, classic style ESB. But now we're going to do something a little bit different. A little kind of a twist on this with a nice local vibe to us. Tell us about the 21st anniversary edition from Heavy Seas. So this beer is a very unique beer. I don't think you're going to come across another ESB of this style. So what Heavy Seas did is they took the ESB, they added a couple twists, and they definitely tied a lot of the local flavor yeah, into that. Definitely. No pun intended, because in part of the brewing process, they used Domino's Brown Sugar, right? Oh. One of the most iconic brands um, in the state of Maryland. Certainly. And post-production, after the beer was finished, they aged it for six months in Sagamore Spirits rye whiskey barrels. And Todd, right. what, you know the tie-in to Sagamore. So that's the CEO, Kevin Plank, uh, of Under Armour. Mm -hmm. uh, is a distillery that's located in Baltimore as well. So, very cool. Tie in there. Very cool tie. Now, in. I had this beer when it came out in 2016, and I loved it, but I didn't taste that sweetness from the, the sugar. I'm hoping that's come through a little bit. Now, the smell, I can still smell the whiskey. I can still smell it. Yeah, there is a strong whiskey right? presence in this still. It was overpowering in 2016. And that's a great note that Todd makes. Yep. Oh, right? Because. Hey. There you go. There's one. You wouldn't really think of an ESB as a style of beer to age. It's no. really meant to be drank fresh, right? It's, right? it's a pale ale. It's not something that you're going to sit around for a couple of years. But this particular version, the barrel aging process, oh. the, the whiskey notes in it, as Todd said, it was very strong, very yes. difficult. So we thought, why not take this Great and age this a little bit and see what comes up with it okay. a couple of years down the road. So let's get into it. I'm, yeah. I, Cheers. Smells, yeah, it smells I can beautiful. smell the whiskey. Cheers, guys. I can smell the sweetness coming off it. I can't wait to get into this. Wow. The whiskey's still there, but it's certainly come down. It's so smooth. That that mouth feels amazing on yeah. this too. You know, it's really it's funny off. because we wow. we've done a lot of comparisons with the Bourbon County Stouts. Yes. How they change from year to year as they've sat and they've aged. And remember that 2016, even three years later, yep. was like hitching the face yes. bourbon. Yes. You said the bourbon was a little heavy, heavy on yes. the 2016 when you tried this, but this, to me, How beautiful feels like it's right. mellowed a little bit. It's yes. nice and balanced, and the sweetness gets to come through a little bit. Look Definitely. at Todd's glass here. Look at that lacing. See that carbonation. That's See how amazing. that comes through. Uh, that's really good. Heavy Seas did a wonderful job with this, Woo. and this has definitely held up. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. silky smooth. Um, the flavors, after two years of aging, Mike, have come. This is a better beer now than sure. it was in 2016. If anybody's out there, you have both of these on tap right now. So if yes. you come in January, you're going to see these two on tap at Hellas. Yeah. Now, drink one oh, after the other, okay. right? Okay. And, you know, typically we wouldn't put the same, you know, beer or tip of the same style of beer on at the That's same time. The, fla the flavor now is changing yes, now. Completely. It's crazy. To me, I get a little bit more copperness, yes. uh, like a little bit more mineral out yes. of the winter storm than I did before. Nuts. I think because of the the sweetness yes. and the notes in the uh, 21. The whiskey coming through there. That is that is yeah. really interesting how that's changed. You know what's really really going to change the flavor of them? Pairing these with some food. Oh, oh, oh Edie. Yeah. So, what would we pair? To, I mean, I'm assuming because we still have two pretty distinct flavor profiles here. Yes. If we're starting with the winter storm, a traditional ESB, what would you recommend? you grab with this you know when we're pairing you know mm -hmm. drinks and food even with wine um, we always try to look at the culture where the product comes from so where is this beer coming from it's a traditional English, English beer and right? so one of the smart things to do would be to look at traditional fare of England and what may have been drinking in the period that an ESB came up like what type of food they're gonna eat during mm -hmm. that period so what we've done today is we've put together fish and chips. Nice. Oh, cool. What's more traditional English Nothing. than sitting at a pub, Nothing. drinking a beer, drinking an ale, and having some fish and Thinking chips. Think about that. Yeah. Love it. So, fish and chips, an ESP. We can put some Def Leppard on in the background. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> can you beat that? I love it. All All right, I'm looking forward to it. Let's grab this. All right. So you said fish and chips. Here we go. This looks amazing. Ooh. Before we dive in, because we're ready, tell us a little bit about the dish and again why this pairs so well. So we uh, 
in the spirit of heavy seas, we took a classic English dish, the fish and chips, and we put a little bit of a twist on it for you. We actually used the winter storm in the batter to make a winter storm battered nice. fish and chips. So we, uh, we decided on the dish because Whoa. of the nature of it, right? Fish and chips is a fatty, oily, greasy type of dish, right? So the, you know, the bitter bite and the, um, the spices and the malts and the sweetness that you're going to find in the uh, winter storm is really good to kind of cut through some of that fat and the grease and it pairs really well. It kind of adds that acid or citrus note Look, to the dish cool. right, to bring balance. Let's go. I'm going for it. Ugh. Mm. 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 It's a nice crispy batter. You got. You better believe it. Mm. Cuts right through it. Mm -hmm. Cuts right through it. Ah, oh, so the batter is amazing on this too. I know you used the winter storm, but mm. nice and crispy. The fish it is light, and delicate, and then you you take. So let's this, sip that beer with it. Yeah, take that bitter, uh, the ESB with it. The winter storm just works so well. That's fantastic mm -hmm. together. Oh my god. We'll round it out. That's oh really good. God. I could envision us sitting at a pub and we were in England right now, right? Oh. Eating with our fingers, or drinking some good ale. You can sit at a pub at Hellas and have this. Right, anytime you, you want to come on down here, because this is some good stuff. Amazing. The Absolutely. Greeks, the Italians, and the Irish eating mm -hmm. some traditional English food together. Mm -hmm. right? There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Chew your food. <laughs> so good. So we, we're dealing with a bigger beer here with a lot of flavors, strong flavors. So we have a dish that's a lot stronger than the fish and chips, right? So this is a bacon wrapped filet that's been stuffed with blue, ge blue cheese. And we've made a reduction using the ingredients that are in the beer, right? So that's we amazing. use brown sugar, we use some Sagamore uh, rye whiskey, and we put a little bit of the 21st anniversary in there as well. So you're going to get all of those flavors in the sauce, which are gonna tie it to the beer, and then the, the pungency and the sharpness of the blue cheese. Mike, <clears throat> stop talking, start cutting. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you're killing me. You need to smell it. So this is hungry is Italians. Amazing, <laughs> look at that, look at that. Excellent. Uh, Come on down so and get this. I mean, yes. We need some smell of vision. Woo! Tonight. I know Look we do. That. Cut oh. through there. Look at that. She's a new car. Uh, oh, oh my God. Some goodness. blue cheese. Woo! Man. Andy, how, what do you think She's about that? I think it's not going to last the day. No, I don't think so either. He put mashed potatoes on there again. A little bit of mashed potatoes. You always have a starch. You got to balance. A lot of what we're talking about, a lot of what we do here is about balance, right? So you always have to balance um, your flavors and the mashed potatoes adds a little bit of that earthiness to it like the mineral content that umami the quality that we look for in food all right guys how do we do this mike just start uh drink first eat first what should we do i think that you should nope. take a little bit of a bite first and then a drink to wash it down so as we bite into it oh, and we yeah. taste the we taste the food with the beer we're going to look for a well-balanced flavor you're going to have a little bit of sharpness and pungency from the cheese you're going to have some sweetness from the sauce mm. it can be mm -hmm. that's fantastic mm. well done how about when you the reduction sauce when you get a little bit of that blue, blue cheese, cheese in there and mm -hmm. you're drinking this, it just kind of... I'm going to do it. Wow. That's amazing. Now, the blue cheese really cuts through in the middle. And then the bacon, the, the savoriness of the bacon and the meat, and then that reduction sauce, wash it down with this. Well, what I love here is that you've got some really bold flavors. Blue cheese, big flavor. You know, a, a steak in and of itself, a filet's got a big, bold take, flavor. Take a sip of this. And then the bacon's got a very big flavor, too. Yes. So you need something, you need a big beer that's going to be able to cut through that and balance yes, it. And yes, this, yeah. this is perfect. This plays really well together. And then you, you drink this, this 21st, and it cuts off through that again. That's, this is really See, good. See, I think when we're pairing food with the beer, it, you know, allows us to enjoy the beer more mm -hmm. right like sometimes when you're bring, drinking a big heavy beer it just kind of wears at you yeah. by the time you get down to the end of your glass uh, end of your pint you now it's kind of warm and it's it's heavy I mean, when you're eating food 
it just kind of makes it so much easier. Back it kind of back and forth. It makes it like it's all one big component. Yeah, right? absolutely. The fun thing about beer too is that there's so many different styles of beers and flavors. It is different from wine. Where wine, you have your traditional. Hey, let's have a Cabernet Sauvignon with something like this. This, you have to find the right beer to pair with, and that's why, if you want to have a 21st anniversary, you want to have a Bourbon County stuff, something like that. Big steak with some bacon, oh, blue cheese. My goodness, this is perfect. Amazing. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. And again. At Hellas, you get that kind of service. They've got so many good beers on. Michael have food pairings with that beer, so you know exactly what they get that will mm -hmm. complement that beer. It's just amazing. Just absolutely amazing, Mike. Well, well I will say, for our first episode of 2019, Ooh. this has been educational. It's uh, been wonderful to try some new beers. The food has been top notch. Top notch. Taste of England. Uh, Taste of Baltimore. <laughs> what else can you ask for, right? This is right. great. Steak and potatoes. Love go. it. So uh, if you like what you see from 21090, as always, please hit that subscribe button and click that bell in the corner. It's going to let you know every time we've got a new video. We have Instagram. We've got Twitter. We now are on tap, so yep. we can come and we can rate these yeah. amazing beers. We can share them with you. Mike's also got that. Yep. We're going to hook you up with all of Hella's feeds because you're going to want to come down here. You're going to check out the amazing things they have going on. Their staff is knowledgeable. They're courteous. They're just wonderful. I mean, I can't say enough about how gracious everyone has been here at Hella's. Yes. Yeah, see that, buddy? We love you. <laughs> so, again, happy New Year's to everyone. Yes. Happy New Year's to you guys. You too. To uh, many more episodes. And yeah. uh, I can't wait to see what we got in store for maybe Valentine's Day oh, next month. Yeah. That's going to be really good. All I right. think stout maybe in the, in the, maybe? Something. 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 We'll Mike, Mike has something, something up his sleeve. Something chocolatey, something, something sweet. Sweet right. and sour, like me and you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> sour right there. Just don't cover you guys with chocolate. <laughs> oh, no. This is going on the rails. <laughs> we just offended yeah. everyone out on YouTube. All right. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. All right, guys. Yamas. Yamas. There you Whoa. go. That's really good. Let me bring it back. Bring it in, Todd. All right, so we've tasted the beers. Now we're going to eat and Pair them with some amazing. Nah, that sucks. You sure did. Go. Okay. Yep, go. <laughs> He's not the best cover man in baseball for nothing, folks. Go. <laughs> oh. Wow. Mikey, you drinking this right away in the morning? Shh. Mm. Yeah. Mel, I need you to stay quiet, buddy. We're shooting a video here. Yes. I need you to stay out of the picture. I need you to stay back there. Mel, we're shooting a video. <laughs> this is like a, a, a TV show on YouTube. Holy cow, that's a good steak right there. Look at that. Oh. Mm. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you pair anything with an Irish ham? <laughs> <laughs> Out of like that note from the whiskey so, in the beer. Yeah, I it's <laughs> Mel, you're killing me, man. I need you to go somewhere else. <laughs> that's awesome. I need you to go somewhere else, Mel. You're killing me. All right. Do it again. Oh, man. Um, yes. We're shooting a show. Yeah, that's funny. All right. That's all right. I think I was horrible on that anyway.